Here's one here. The Romex is practically coming out of the attic. This is crazy. Don't do this. This is dangerous in every way and completely not acceptable per the NEC or just common sense standards. Let's talk about how to install Romex next to an attic access or an attic scuttle hole. Recently, I had to fail somebody because they had Romex too close and I actually had a hard time finding the code. I knew as far as what it said, but I didn't know exactly where it was. To my surprise, I actually did not find it in the Romex section. I found it in the AC cable section. If you go to 334, which is Romex, it actually refers you back to 320, which is AC cable. AC cable is very similar to this MC stuff here behind me. It's armored cable. If we look in accessible attics, it tells you how to install it. We're run across the top of floor joists or within seven feet of the floor or joist across the face of the rafters or studding. The cable should be protected by guard strips that are at least as high as the cable. Where the space is not accessible by permanent stairs or ladders, protection shall only be required within six feet of the nearest edge of the scuttle hole or attic entrance. Then it goes on to say if it's installed on the side of parallel rafters or studs, it needs to be installed per 300.4, which is protection for physical damage. That would apply if you had like a elevation change in your attic and like stairs and you're running your Romex across the face of that and you could possibly kick it with your toe. That would be subject to physical damage and you would have to uh, act accordingly with how you're going to protect that. So we're going to talk about running across the top of floor joists specifically because that's what the scenario was. And then also, before we get into it, just know that you cannot put Romex on top of attic decking. So if it's decked with plywood, whatever, Romex cannot go there. That's storage space for the homeowner. Don't do it. Even if it's underneath the AC unit or something, um, just, just don't do it. You can't do it. So if you look here, you're going to see that the Romex is very close to the attic access. And specifically what we said earlier, if it's a permanent attic access, you can see the springs there. You're going to know that it's got to be seven feet away. So seven feet in all directions. If you've got decking on one side and rafters on the other, that's going to apply to the rafter side, of course. And then the decking, no room mix whatsoever. So one option would be to just, I've seen it where people put two by fours over all the rafters and they just deck the whole thing. So long as we're not pinching the room mix, that's also cool. Now, if you got a attic scuttle hole where you don't have a permanent access, it's still six feet. So we got seven feet for permanent and six feet for a scuttle hole. So we're going to look at what a furring strip might look like, what a parallel framing member might look like, and some other examples to help you get your installs up to code. Here's a good example of a running board or a furring strip. You can see that this 1x4 is definitely higher than the Romex itself. And you got adequate protection because if you're to stand on this, you're not going to be crushing the Romex. Here's one here. The Romex is practically coming out of the attic. This is crazy. Don't do this. This is completely not acceptable per the NEC or just common sense standards. This one here, they got the Romex on the plywood decking. Now, I've drawn this Romex in myself in paint, but you guys can get the idea. If you got Romex on the deck, simply cannot do it. Here's one going across the step and how you'd want to put that framing member maybe across the face of that so you can't kick it. Maybe cap it off. So that code reference is 320.23A and that says cables run across the top of floor joists. If you found any of this helpful, let me know what you think in the comments below and also like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.